Well, Dr. Jonas, a very, a very important part of the uh, surgeon's relationship with the patient and the family uh, is the idea of uh, counseling, explaining to the family uh, what needs to be done, what best can be done, uh, to some extent how it's done, and very importantly, what the risks and expectations are. Now, it seems to me that in the early 1950s when uh, open heart surgery and intracardiac repair under direct vision was being done really for the first time, uh, that uh, number one, surgeons could advise uh, families that uh, what was being done for their child really was something entirely new. Yeah. And of course at that time, uh, had the potential to give the child a chance that otherwise uh, simply wasn't uh, imaginable. Uh, the expectations now are very different. General heart surgery has uh, been refined uh, to the point where for most heart malformations, the expectation of successful surgery uh, is really quite high. Right, right. Uh, how do you see this having evolved over the course of your career, which now spans many decades, uh, back in those days uh, when you first came to Boston uh, and neonatal surgery was relatively new, uh, anatomic correction of transposition was brand new, uh, surgery for hearts with single ventricles in very small infants hadn't, done, hadn't been done before. Uh, what are your recollections and more importantly your reflections on the process of of uh, educating, advising, counseling, and really partnering with the parent uh, in these new enterprises? That, that, that's, that's a big question. That's a great question because it's, it's certainly an area that has evolved within the United States, for example, but having had the perspective of working in several countries, a, as you have also, I think it's a fascinating cultural question. The differences in counseling families and, and patients, adult patients for that matter. I, I'm sure you were familiar working in the UK uh, that uh, uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, patients were told, you're gonna have an operation, we're gonna cut that cancer out and you'll be all set, that's it. That was the full informed consent process. And, you know, I think New Zealand was probably even one step further away from that because I, I had worked in the UK as a medical student for a few months and, and then back to Australia and then in New Zealand. Uh, and in New Zealand, it, it was, uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at five o'clock. We've got something organized for you and uh, there's no need to really give you any details about it. That, that was pretty much and patients were remarkably accepting of that. It was, there's this stoical New Zealand persona that says, whatever you do, doctor, to my body, I'm absolutely fine with, and, and even to their children. And um, Australia is somewhere between that extreme and the US extreme, which was always more of a, a, a more uh, detailed uh, explanation and, and a lot more questioning and uh, perhaps a little bit more skeptical. But even within the US, there's been a very big transition from uh, a, a, a less detailed description to today, uh, an extremely detailed description of risks and benefits.